So, and the, the next uh, uh, slides are different. So I want to ask, are there questions? And also, maybe we should go upstairs. I'm <laughs> the, the, the sense of how people are feeling. Any questions? Any? Do you? Because this, this what I would like to do is to um, take this back into more of, of the, the ritual, more of a sense of, uh, of why I feel we're gathering now, why we're gathering home. That what I want us to take note of is that we are downstairs in a room that I designed for my father. So this is a sunroom for the father, and here are the archetypes lie in the walls. I love the myth. It's saying that the structure, the son designs for the father, because this connects us to the outer world of shared experience. It also connects us to the garden of intimate experience. But as we go up the stairs, to the left is, is the entrance into the domestic plane. I mean, our living room is there, our bedrooms are there, and then we will turn and go up the stairs to the studio or up to the hieroglyph. <laughs> this is very significant because we start to see in this relationship, and that's something I'd like you to hold in mind, is that we begin in black and law, white, like the Wizard of Oz, like, ET, uh, like uh, what's the other black and white thing? Like, well, let's say Wizard of Oz. Um, and we will move into color. This is very important also because of the relationship of the knowledge of the father and the mother. I'd like to point out that the father says, the knowledge of the father is I think, therefore I am. The knowledge of the mother is I love, therefore I am. Mm -hmm. And you are born the mother and father. So we have been trying to reconcile these two qualities. When it is no longer either or, we stand erect. We embrace the truth, as is shown here graphically in this home, that we leave, we, we, and when we ascend, interestingly enough, into the depths of Sophia, into the hieroglyph of the soul, into the studio, into the Akashic, into the library, We'll be surrounded by artists, meaning that we're surrounded by shared vision. Not one vision, but shared vision. And that's the metaphor of home. Home is saying your heart, your intimate questions are absolutely essential. Because when we look at history and time as this great conversation, think about our difficulty, our sense of possibility, our sense of panic at this point. Every point of view is actually saying this conversation, this dynamic possibility is so profound, so essential, that every voice is needed. And that's when we start to think like a quantum field. We start to think like the DNA, that as I change the footprint of what I assume, that will have an effect on a footprint of what others assume. This is what I've learned from history. And this is why, as we go upstairs, we leave the realm of the law, the structure of the psyche, that hard-won quality of the masculine nature, which has allowed us to do this. Think of this. The lover yearning for the beloved. Finally standing erect. Finally standing able to see. Able to turn. Not needing to personalize any of it. But able to say, I am all of it. And then we move upstairs once again into the knowledge of Sophia. And she says, welcome home. Because you'll realize here there is no beginning, no ending. I am beneath your feet, I am where you are sitting, I am the books you are reading, I am on the ceiling, I am all things. And this is what uh, I feel very strongly is, we had to create the necessary strength to walk upstairs and come back down and go back out of that world. Because it'd be lovely to stay up there. I live up there, so from why I talk this way now. <laughs> um, uh, and I, I must say, the, the energy is getting to a point where it is becoming almost impossible to paint up there. So, uh, uh, but it, it's, it, and I have to blame it on all of your energies because it is that feeling of we're not building a spaceship. There's no place to go. We're building mind ships. Because when we transform mind, when we transform what we consider to be our base assumption about who and what we think we are, we create that emptiness. We create the space where the possibility begins to emerge. And this is what allows us to blossom. So let's go upstairs. But first, I don't know if there, there might not be enough stones, but as you come, I've created this stone spiral. And I want us to hold in our hands the stones because I feel very strongly this relationship of the, the story of this stone and this stone. And I won't go into the long version 
But I want to say that this stone, this heart stone, this fossilized scallop, sits on a base of these fossilized scallops. But these fossilized scallops look like a child. See that head here, like this? And what I feel so strongly is that, that as we see here, mind is returning to matter. Mm. Knowing is returning to form. Love is being restored, and wisdom is being reborn. <clears throat> we have journeyed as a child. We do not remember our source. We must forgive our fellow humans, not for being wicked, but for really understanding that when we do not remember, we become crazy. But this has also created the foundation for this return of our greater mind of knowing. So as you come and you pick up the stone here, hold it in your hand and start to realize that we've come out of this density, this absolute ancientness. And when we hold a stone, it is not of one time. It is the outcome of all time. And it will tell us stories. I want us to actually anchor in the body, to trust in the body that we are the outcome of this journey. So come here, and, and I have a, some stones for you to pick up, and we will go upstairs. Yes. And any questions or comments or thoughts? Anyone? Oh, well. Thank you.